In the next edition of It's About Money, my guest is Java Joe. We'll be talking about is coffee worth the beans? Stay with us for our next show. Hello and welcome to another edition of It's About Money. I'm Nanette Nokan and thank you for joining us. My guest today is Java Joe, Joe Pelosi, and I'm so excited he's here because everybody in our community and I think in the coffee business know about Joe Pelosi, J Java Joe. So Joe, how did you get started in the coffee business? Well, in 1974, I rented a little place on uh, Shone Place in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. It was a... Um, little house and I opened up a cafe called Cafe Primo and I brought espresso machine to Rochester there was no espresso machines I brought in an espresso machine and I introduced cappuccino and espresso to the masses and um, that was quite a while ago now it's uh, in Aladdin's today I see okay it's yeah. right on the canal I remember being at Cafe Primo a Cafe long time Primo ago. yeah 74 Okay, I didn't know that was your uh, restaurant. And that was my first, uh, and, I, and there was no good coffee at the time. But I was very successful with it, and I sold it. Mm -hmm. And But in, in my research, I found out that the, in Hawaii, they were, um, Hawaii was the only place in the U.S. that uh, produced coffee. Mm -hmm. And their cof our coffee was being, um, it was getting bulldozed because the Kona coast of Hawaii is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Mm -hmm. And people were buying them, bulldozing the coffee land. There was no money in it. Mm -hmm. So they were bulldozing it and they were putting pretty houses. Um, you know, if you were in LA, it would cost you $10 million for the same thing you can buy in Hawaii for 200,000. Mm -hmm. And you get, you know, it's only a short flight. So um, we had that and then, um, so I says, I'm gonna go to Hawaii and help to save the American coffee industry. and I. Sold my restaurant, went to Hawaii, got a farm, hooked up with a few people uh, that were had this, of the same thoughts. One guy from California, one guy from Alaska, mm -hmm. two guys from California. And uh, we busted the co-op. We started processing the coffee. Mm -hmm. And the rest is... And I left before it became super popular like it is today. I sell it for $30 a pound today. And back then I couldn't get six. Oh, my but, goodness. You know, that was in the 80s. Yeah, and coffee is such a big demand, right? Yeah. Well, the Kona was always a, a famous coffee, but the fact that, oh, they were planting macadamia nuts. That's what they were doing. And uh, so they would cut four coffee trees to put one macadamia nut because the price of macadamia nuts was high. I see. Um, but the difference is you could grow macadamia nuts in Texas, Australia, uh, a lot of places. I see. So once they started putting in acres and acres of macadamia, they... the bottom fell out on sure. that. And right. now they had no coffee and the macadamia nuts were, weren't, weren't worth anything. But we started selling it, I'd say maybe 82, about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were selling it to a processor and a roaster in um, uh, San Francisco called United Coffee. They're not around any longer. But they, uh, they bought the coffee from us and we got the, we we're trying to drive the price up for the farmers, because mm -hmm. the farmers were only getting 20 cents a pound. Oh, goodness. And it was terrible. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, they, uh, and most of the farm, the average age of a farmer at the time was like 62. So it was just a matter of how many more years before it was gone, between the bulldozing it and, and building homes. And, and um, today, there's a lot of coffee farms, there's 150 of them, I guess. In Hawaii? In Hawaii. Okay. And the people there, because I bring coffee in from a farmer there, mm -hmm. um, the people there are getting their price. Great. And so it's worth it now. You they know, can that's, make a living, yes. Well, I think all coffee should be about $30 a pound because if you've ever seen the work that goes into it, mm -hmm. you'd understand. It's very labor intensive. It's one of the most labor intensive crops in the world. Hmm. and. The price is so cheap, and it's because the middlemen, I just returned from a trip to Nicaragua. Um, the middlemen bought it, the farmers, I, I, I met with four farmers and I bought their whole crop, mm. which is 12,000 pounds, it's not a lot. Mm. Sounds but, like a lot to me, but yeah, in New York. No, it isn't, I mean, really, I, I, I roast 
twelve hundred pounds a week. So oh my. I mean, that's a, okay. you know, it's not a lot. Um, and so middle the middleman bought their coffee in January. Mm -hmm. He gave them a third, and he, they still haven't collected the other two thirds. Hmm. And he sold it. Oh boy! You know he sold it already. He just brought he took the stuff, brought it to the mill, and gave it to somebody else. And now these poor people get little. And if you saw the way they lived in little shacks with no water, no electricity, their kids are shoeless. I mean, it's just, hmm. it's just terrible, you that's know. But that. that's, but that's the coffee industry. It's like that all over the planet, hmm. uh, you know, except for Kona, and Jamaica, where the Jamaican coffee gets a big number, a big price. Puerto Rico is also a quality coffee that, and, but that's also American, so it gets, there's some labor rules involved. But in the other countries, uh, the the labor uh, laws aren't quite like ours, so they're able to really um, cheat the farmers. And, and unfortunately, these people live on rice and beans, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, they, and, it's, and everybody else is enjoying. I, I don't care about the other end, you know, the Starbucks end, or they're making a lot of money. No, it's just the fact that every person that enjoys a cup of coffee in the morning, mm -hmm. it starts their day with it. Right. You know, it's... They're buying it. They're buying stuff for like four or five bucks a pound. It's, I mean, I would, I couldn't drink it, but they're still buying it at that rate, six bucks a pound, seven bucks a pound, and it's worth way more than that. Hmm. You know, so is it? It's, it's worth a lot more than it's selling for. So the quality really can command the high prices because of the taste, like you said earlier. Even the, the lousy stuff should be more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're for the farmer. That's well, true. I know what it is to pick beans. You know, and you pick them, you got to pick them, then you got to pulp them, then you got to wash them, then you have to dry them, then you have to uh, uh, pick them all up, bag them all up, bring them to the mill. They have to go through a mill and get hulled and graded and separated by weight. And then they finally get bagged up and they finally get sewed and they finally get on the truck. They, they shipped here, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's goes on and on. It's, it's, it's a high it's, maintenance it's, product. <laughs> it, very, it really is. It's wow. very good. That's amazing. So, so you, so you've been a, you developed being a coffee connoisseur over the years. I mean, how, what makes a Kona coffee different than Nicaragua coffee, Nicaraguan coffee? I mean, obviously the soil is different. The right? soil, yeah, everything is controlled by the soil, the sunshine. You know, just the climate. It's just like why are you know why are Rochester's tomatoes, our homegrown tomatoes are so good. Mm -hmm. You know, and then compared to what you get from right now, if you bought them in the store, they'd probably be from Georgia or Florida. And they look great, but mm -hmm. they don't taste like the Rochester tomatoes, you know? Right. And they don't taste like, and our corn is very good here. Yes, yes. You know, so we have a couple of great, great gifts in this area, for, you know, we, I think, you know. So it's the land, so it's the location. The it's land, all about that. It's all about yeah. soil. There's yeah, any that's... products like that, you so, know? So that's great. You, you then, uh, right now, you've, you've had many businesses that you've started and sold. You're quite an entrepreneur. No. And is it, is it like coffee, your real love, and so whatever yes. business is? Yes, it's, okay. yeah, that, that's why I went to Nicaragua. We're going to, you know, start getting involved with the social aspect of it and also um, bringing a high-quality coffee to the, um, uh, the, the people. And, you know, I'm going to charge more for it. Mm -hmm. But the stuff that I brought back with me mm -hmm. sold like crazy. Oh, great. I mean, I, I, I had people not begging for more. I said, I can't sell you anymore. There isn't any. You got to wait oh, till wow. February. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they'll start harvesting in December. And then it'll take them till about February before it's ready. Sure. And by the time we get it here, it's February or March. So all these poor people that tasted it and loved it. But it's we'll all about wait. how you take care of it. And, and I learned it and when I first got to Hawaii, uh, Mr. Takashiba was the, my mentor, and he said, there's a thousand and one places you can sell your coffee, and there's a thousand and one things that can go wrong from the time you pick the berry. Mm, well, and he's right. Yeah, because there's so many variables, yeah. There's a lot of variables, and then there's just a handling, and you have to handle it right. I have to go down to Nicaragua December to make sure that their farmers are doing what I want them to do. Mm -hmm. So that we keep, the, and then then I have to go back again in January, or February to bring it to the mill and make sure the mill doesn't throw it in with anybody else's coffee. So it's all our coffee. Sure. Um, we'll go by the brand name, the Merchant of Coffee, Choice of the Connoisseur, which is the label we have here. Our bags will show that. And it's you. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> with a cigar. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, 
coffee is good with cigars. Cigars yeah. is better with coffee, I should I say. I think they, I think they go great together. I don't drink, so you know, I guess it, it used to, I guess, uh, was it brandy in a cigar? I guess uh -huh. or scotch, you know. Okay, but to, to Being you that I don't mind. drink, it's coffee in a cigar. Yeah, and you can drive after that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the farmers must really love having you as the uh, the buyer of their crop because they know they can count on you, right? Very and handy. being swindled by individuals. Well, right? I told them there, you know, we have two jobs. I, they have a job, and I have a job. Their job is to produce the coffee the way I want it, pick it ripe and all that. And then my job is to make sure that it gets processed right and gets to gets into the port in New Jersey or Houston, wherever I bring it. I'm not sure where we're going to put it yet. And, um, uh, you know, and I offered them a, a much higher price than they've ever received, and they were, like, ecstatic. So. That's great. I had pictures, but I don't, I, I don't have them with me, unfortunately. I mean, I don't have photos. Uh-huh, I see. Okay. You know, it's a, it's a disc. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, that's great. That's great. <laughs> so, so what got you attracted to go to Nicaragua? I mean, you have the, the you have a supplier now of coffee from, from Kona. From Yeah, well, the Kona, and the Kona coffee um, that I bring in, it comes from a farm, a single estate in Kona called Heron's Old Tree Estate. And he sends it in the um, ship anywhere box, the postal service. Okay, so he sure. sends me a couple of boxes of that. I see. And uh, it's forty pounds. I don't buy that much from him, but you know, at thirty bucks a pound, I sell it actually cheap at thirty bucks a pound. It mm -hmm. should be more. And then I get the Blue Mountain Jamaican from the the Mavis Bank for, uh, estate in in Jamaica, and that comes through a um, the only guy that's licensed to sell that. Mm -hmm. It comes in a barrel. I see. And that we sell for forty dollars a pound, and then from Puerto Rico I get uh, also a single estate called Cafe Casablanca, mm -hmm. and they send it the same way in the, the ship anywhere box. Mm -hmm. But to get stuff from any other country, you don't have that luxury of the ship anywhere box. Sure, sure. And the Nicaraguan coffee that I've bought over the years was kind of a boring, f flat, you know, not a very distinctive cup, mm -hmm. and and. Um, when you get, well, when the people that let, when I came back a couple, two weeks ago and I roasted it on Saturday morning at the market and I was giving people cup samples, uh -huh, uh -huh. one guy bought four pounds. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he, he's, oh <laughs> my God, he said, this stuff is incredible. And I was charging $10 for eight ounces, so 20 bucks a pound. No problem selling it. I sold it all. I had to stop roasting it. And then I, then I had to send some to my son who lives in New York. So I had to give him some <laughs> and, uh. So we're out. We're out of coffee. That's great. So high quality can command the price. Always. Once yeah. you taste it, you know, people don't, at the public market, selling Blue Mountain is not easy. Blue Mountain is at $40 a pound is a little high. The Kona sells pretty fast at 30. Hmm. The Puerto Rican sells fine at 20. And this Nicaraguan at 20 sold very good. I see. Wow. But That's great. That's great. And we're The 40 seems like the the break point I or something. The but I sell it. Uh -huh. I, I sell it. It just takes a little longer. Yes. I wish we could move it out because it's really, a, I, if you went to the like Eastview, I think they're getting 60 a pound. Oh my goodness. And it's not as fresh. So it, what's the shelf life of coffee? I mean, you know. 30 it, days. A thir that's it. Oh yeah. my goodness. So, so, so really, um, but is that from the beans to being ground? Or? No, once you grind it, uh -huh. you, you're talking, you know, days. I see. Okay. You know, I always tell my customers to buy half a pound. What they, what they're going to consume in the course of the week, because they come every Saturday. Mm -hmm. You know, don't buy two pounds and then. Uh, well, you could if you want. If you have a grinder, and you want to buy whole bean coffee, mm -hmm. and then you could buy it and put it into a, you know, put it in a freezer. Okay. And okay. store it in there, and then take it out as you need it. I see. Give so it tightly a, seal it. Tightly it seal, put it in the freezer, okay. and then you could take it out and use it as a. Uh, you know, like let it defrost sure. first, of course. Uh -huh. It doesn't take long to defrost, half hour maybe. And then um, you can um, you can use that uh, method or else, like I tell the people that don't have grinders, just mm -hmm. buy enough for the week. Yes, buy a half a pound or three quarters of a pound, whatever's going to get you through till next Saturday. Mm -hmm. And and then it won't sit around, you know. So it's fresh. Because yeah. you don't want to sit around for three, four weeks. It'll oh, ground up, it'll be terrible. In whole bean form, it's good for three or four weeks. I see, I see. And is it always good to refrigerate it or not really? I say it? freeze it. I, and I don't know, there's, there's different schools of thought on that, but. I see. Well, you're the experts. So I say freeze <laughs> that's it. Good advice. I say freeze it. There's a lot of experts that say keep it in a dark, um, keep it airtight in a jar, you know, uh, uh, 
ceramic jar or something with an mm -hmm. airtight seal on sure, it. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Why not just freeze it? Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> if, if you have a freezer, freeze it. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll take a quick break. Okay. My guest is Java Joe, and he is an entrepreneur and the man about coffee. <laughs> we'll be right back. Things can come and go quickly these days, but one thing has been sure and steady, and if you haven't noticed, it's been on the air for over 10 years now. Nanette Nokin has been a Rochester Public Access television fixture. With her highly accredited financial background, viewers are sure to learn some tips of the trade. Her show, It's About Money, has been educating, informing, entertaining, and inspiring viewers since 1996. She and her guests have been giving valuable advice on how to invest, spend, and save your hard-earned money. And who is not interested in money? So tune into your public access station for a new monthly episode of It's About Money for Rochester's finest in finance. And we're back. I'm Nanette Nokan. It's about money. And my guest is Java Joe, the man about coffee. <laughs> so, so tell me about You've been an entrepreneur for about 40 years mm -hmm. and you've bought and sold business. Mm -hmm. I mean, is coffee you, like your thing for entrepreneurial? I mean, what do you own now? if you don't mind me asking. I have the roasting facility at the public market, and that's it. I, Mike's got the cafes. Mm -hmm. okay. We work together. I supply all of his coffee, and then I supply a number of restaurants, the finer, you know, restaurant Two Vine uh, in uh, Prietti's down the street here in Webster, um, Max, oh. uh, so Good so Luck. So select restaurants get your fine yeah, coffee. Yeah, Rocco. Uh, and you have to like them to be able to sell your coffee, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Sorta. Good coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Country Club of Rochester sure, yeah, sure. It uses it. Uh, now, do you have, a, uh, as an entrepreneur, some people like don't want to lose control of their business, but you've bought, started, and sold many businesses yeah, associated with coffee. Them, yeah. yeah. And is that hard to do? Is it hard to let go? I mean, well, you know, I knew when I left, my, when Mike took over the cafe, I knew his qual his uh, attention to detail was like mine. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's gone on for 20 years and uh, it hasn't missed a step. In fact, it's probably gotten better mm, that's great. because, um, you know, the crowd is a little younger and you know, he was younger. It was better for him to relate to, you know, to the, uh, but the, it's when we first opened, I mean, we served everybody at the tables. The RPO people would come in and we'd sit them down and give them a menu and then, you know, and bring them. We had the coffee and uh, uh, the milk came in a little uh, creamer thing and sugars were thing. You know, you got all this uh -huh. stuff, you know. And it was four bucks. You know, wow. With, you know, four cups of coffee, a oh, dollar yeah. a piece. <laughs> what a good deal. Yeah, you think about it now, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, there's been a lot of changes over the last 20 years, but it's very, it's still going real good. It still looks great in the quality of the product. It's all about product. Mm -hmm. You know, you could sell a business, but if they don't, you know, I had, I started the hot dog carts in Rochester oh. in 1971. Oh my goodness. And I left, it was a, you know, thing and then um, they sold the carts to somebody. Well, today there's no carts on the street that still do the, I had the New York City style steamed hot dogs with the sauerkraut and the mustard and the mm -hmm. onions. It was, I had the carts made in Long Island City, New York, uh -huh. and they were beautiful carts and everybody loved them. Now they're all Zweigel hots on a grill and they're not the same, but sure. I mean, people like them, but. Yeah, but I see you I like the authentic, the New York. I yeah. Like the New York. I, I, I don't go, I don't ever stop at a cart because they don't have the, yeah. they don't have the New York City style, the big long, Frank, all beef frankfurter with the sure. sauerkraut and the mustard. Yes, yes, yes. I, I love you. We're going to the city, you know, once in a while, and it's like, gotta have a hot dog. Yeah, yeah. And that's so, what I sold, and yeah. people loved it. So when I got out of it, when that business was sold, the next people decided to go with Zweigel, so it was more convenient. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so um, where did you get your entrepreneurial spirit? Did someone teach you to be an entrepreneur? I did think it's just... because I can't take orders. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you like to give them. Okay. I tried to get a job once. Okay. And uh, I've tried twice. I see. I see. But you knew enough and had enough motivation to start your own business. I mean, some yeah. people don't like a job because they just don't want it to work. But oh no, no, I don't mind working. Yeah, I just yeah, can't. Yeah. I just can't take orders real well. Yeah. You know, it's a problem. I, 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 you know, I do my own thing, and I just, I really, it just, it's hard to. Uh, it was always hard for me. 
you know, I mean, my stint in the army was like, you know, I only went AWOL twice, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know just like, I just, uh, but, it, but I did work, I did have, yeah, I've had two jobs. Yeah, oh, wow. So, so, so basically, you, you ask, it sounds to me like the question you ask of yourself is, since I don't want to work for someone, what can I do that gives me passion? So well, yeah, the, the hot dog carts came out of simple, I was in school in New York City, and, and I used to eat on them, and then when I came back uh, to Rochester, there were no hot dog carts, hmm. and I was working downtown, mm -hmm. and I'd get out for lunch, and I'd walk around, and I'd say, why isn't there a hot dog cart? And I had, I it lasted like I think, 10 months at that, 10 or 11 months at the job. And I said, that with this. And I went, had a cart built and brought it down to the four corners and stuck it out there. Everybody went crazy. <laughs> they said, what's this? What's this? You know, not Rochester people in 1971 didn't eat on the street. They uh -huh. did not eat on the street. I see, I see. And, and then I also made ice cream. Oh. So I, said, I thought to myself, well, the carts in New York, they, they have, um, they, they roll out and they go to their location and they stay there all day and then they come back. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, need, I, w I didn't have to worry about that. I could service my cart. Mm -hmm. So I went and got ice cream. Mm -hmm. I made my own ice cream at the place called the United Dairy on Cross and Bausch and Lama and Goodman. It's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, made my own ice cream. I had the hot dogs made. And so my cart, I would get if the lawyers or whatever went to went to one of their local restaurants to have a sit-down lunch, they'd come and get an ice cream. Oh, so yeah. I hit them, I got them both ways. You know? <laughs> had, some people just came for the hot dog and left. The other people were eating somewhere else and they came and had an ice cream. So I had lines all for three hours. Oh, well, that's great. So then that was a summer business, really? Yeah, like your spring it lasted before, maybe six, maybe. seven months. Yeah, yeah, and then you had to find something that would last you all Yeah, that's around, what yeah. bothered me. I didn't like that. And then I tried doing like, uh, I tried doing um, concerts festivals and all that. I just, I don't like taking my show on the road. So then I thought about what the heck happened after that. I don't, but I don't know. It's all going to be in my book. It, it, oh, you're doing a book. Yeah, Java oh. Joe's book of love and money. Oh, oh great. <laughs> you know, that's what always sells, <laughs> love and money. That's right. You don't want to read my book. <laughs> well, after that's... all the ex-wives I've got. Oh. <laughs> but, but so, so do, do you look at, do you approach the business more in a financial sense or is it more like the passion? Passion. Okay. I never make money. I always goof up. I blow it. I lose it. I do all kinds of crazy things. But I love the, it's the passion of it, you know. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, you make money, but, you know, I, I, I just can't, uh, like I say, even the opening up the cafe and, on Gibbs Street, mm -hmm. and, I mean, I had, I had little ceramic Hall China creamers. They used to steal them. Honey. Yeah, <laughs> they're so cute. They yeah, they're so cute, they they but they're like $3 a piece. They cost more than the cup of coffee was. Oh, you know? my but, goodness. You know, and little sugar, fancy sugar bowls with little demi toss spoons and yeah, all this yeah. stuff like that, and stuff just disappeared. Oh, yeah. It was like, what am I doing, you know? Yeah. And I mean, that's not business. That's not good smart business, you know? Smart business is what's going on today where people come up, they get a coffee, they go sit down, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they make, don't make I it I had too a labor fancy. factor that was gigantic with waitresses and... and Dishwashers. Oh my goodness! They don't do it anymore. I throw a cup away. So you have this vision, but then sometimes the vision's not so practical because then exactly uh, on what you're not selling is you're losing money. Exactly. So I've had I've had teams of, uh, of financial advisors hit me over the head, <laughs> and after six, at sixty years, they I finally figured it out. <laughs> so. But it just sounds to me like you're having fun. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Well, the new thing is the new the, the really the this this going at you know the Nicaraguan coffee and maybe we'll do uh, Guatemala, Costa Rica, or maybe some hmm. other Central Americans. I don't really care about uh, South America, and I don't care. I mean, I it's not I don't care about them. I just I'm, I don't have no fight. desire to go there. I see. You know, no fight. Yeah. But there's plenty. You know, there's there's plenty to do just in Nicaragua alone. And then there's, you know, like I say, Costa Rica has some good stuff. They're a little more advanced than, than but Guatemala, El Salvador's got great coffee. You know? So right? I might, you know, we might do some popping around. And within well, the, the countries, are there different kinds of coffees? Yeah. yeah, the El Salvador tastes different than the Nicaragua. I see, but, but then in El Salvador, there will be just the one type of coffee. I mean, it's not like a variety of coffee. Well, it's, from it's, the coffee, uh, it's coffee Arabica. Yeah, there's different trees. There's Katura, ah. there's Katawai, there's Bourbon. I see, I see. These are okay. strains. Oh, okay. And, then, and so, like, a Bourbon is as big as that, and a okay. Katura is as big as that. I see. They put them in because they're easier for harvest. I see, but I see. I like the Bourbons, and the stuff that we bought is, 
as a combination of Bourbon and Katura. I see. And they're, they're, when they planted, the original trees were Bourbon, mm -hmm. and then they planted Katura mm -hmm. because they're easier, you know. So, but they didn't take the other ones out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now when they harvest, you can't, I mean, I probably could get them to pick me just the Bourbons or pick me just, but. Some blend in. Yeah, so it's actually two different coffees I together. So but it's all right. Them. It tastes yeah. delicious. Oh, you, you'll, you know, you won't believe how good it is. I mean, I love the aroma of coffee. It's like it truly. Why don't you drink it? I, my stomach doesn't like it, so I just no, serve it to other is, people. No, I got low acid. Co I got a oh. coffee from Java that's so low in acid you won't even know you're drinking. Well, I'll be there Smooth to try it Smooth as silk, out. and it has, uh, if I'd have known, I would have brought you a Java. This is Burundi, so this is not low in acid. Okay, <laughs> that wouldn't go well with me. Okay. But it's got a lot of body, uh -huh. and um, and it's just that there's, the way they, you know, the way it's handled, it's this lower in acid the area comes from. Mm -hmm. They have, they have, um, machines that check the acidities and I see. Okay. My caffeine levels and all that. I see. Okay. I have a book that tells it all. I just don't know exactly. Okay, so Java's is the better coffee. But Java's is real good for you. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, thank you I for mean, that at least advice. You can I, try it. I mean, you know, truly, I, I love the aroma of coffee. So I, I, we serve it at the office, and you know, I just uh, mm -hmm. I just love it. But you know, but okay, great advice. So, what, what advice would you give to someone who uh, has the entre entrepreneurial spirit? But just kind of can't get going at it. I mean, you know, you seem to not have any. You got to do what you love. Yeah. You have to do what you love. You can't tell. Have anybody tell you, don't listen to anyone. Maybe an accountant. Yeah. No, actually, they're kind of crazy too. You, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, you got to find the right mixture of accountant and attorney. Uh, because accountants are so bad, they don't they don't want to do any. They don't want to take any chances. And your lawyer will probably, you know, a good lawyer will help you. My attorney's been wonderful. You know, they, the, uh, they've been the best. Mm -hmm. uh, so they kind of need, you need They somebody. kind of whip me and yell at me, but they still let me go, I you see. know, and. Uh, so they need to remind you of the boundaries. Yeah, get you, in you gotta have some boundaries. Yeah. You gotta, otherwise you get in trouble. You know, if you get a letter from, from the IRS, yeah, you gotta take, you gotta take it serious. <laughs> you, you, know, you just can't throw it in the garbage. It's not Greece after all. Yeah. <laughs> Greece so, the country, I mean. <laughs> yeah, so you have to do certain things, but um, but I would, you know, you gotta go for what you dream. What, you know, you can't really, your friends are always gonna, I, I, I've had more friends that think I'm crazy, mm -hmm. starting with the hot dog carts. Because mm -hmm. I had a very good job, I was paying a lot of money at the time, and, and are you crazy? I don't care, I'm doing it. Yeah, you know, so you gotta have a vision. I enjoyed it. Yes. Okay. Maybe I would have made more money the other way, yeah. but it doesn't matter. You yeah. know. I mean, you don't live for money. I mean, what's the sense? Yeah. Right. You enjoy. I mean, you do need money to be. You able gotta to have a certain care number. Yourself. Yeah. You got money to eat, but right. I mean, if you if you chase, if you say I'm gonna be a millionaire, chances are you'll fall flat on your face. You know. You gotta say I'm gonna do what I love, and if I get to make a million dollars doing it. That's fine. Yeah, it's kind of a, a, a nice side effect. Yeah. You know, you got to do what you love because it makes you happy. Right. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable. So you get you make a million dollars and you blow your brains out or you drink yourself to death or something. You know. Oh. People well, that, do that all the time. And well, you know, that's a great. Very question. unhappy doing what they're doing, and they just drink like you know. As soon as they get out of work, they start pounding the drinks and yeah. makes them forget. Right, right. So really, the question someone asks is, "What is it that I would love to do, rather than what is it that I need to do to make a yeah, million dollars?" Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Great. That's great advice. Right. That's wonderful. You know, I wish I had another hour or two to talk with you because you have so many things to to talk about. You've had wonderful experience, and you've brought great hot dog and great coffee to Rochester. I wish the hot dog had stayed, but the coffee yeah, is here. Yeah. <laughs> so. Cafe Primo was. We, had, we introduced the crepes and omelets, yes. the espressos and cappuccinos. Wow, that's great. Well, thank you very much, Java Joe. I mean, it's you. That's why you're in coffee because with your name, Joe, Java just kind of goes with the it. The Java Joe, yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank you again. Thank I appreciate you. you being a guest. It's been a pleasure. And, and thank you, everyone, for watching us. I hope you stay tuned for our next program. My guest again is Java Joe's, bringing wonderful coffee to Rochester. And yes, it's worth the beans. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you have any questions for It's About Money, please email Nanette at nnocon at aol.com. This program was produced through Penfield Community Television in Penfield, New York.